perfect. That's it. So I will bring you to our familiar laid down position to start with. So on a soggy grey day, I think it's always a good idea to start the way our mood is. Take a load off and get yourself a little bit comfortable. So as you come into this supine position, remember that you can always, if you prefer, bend the knees to take any strain from the lower back. If you're comfortable to extend the legs, separate the hands and the feet equal distance from the midline of the body. Let the weight at the back of the head sink a little more deeply into the floor. And rather than feeling that you have to hold the head up, give yourself permission to relax the back of the neck, to expand into the soft, wide shoulder blades. Let the wide muscles of the back soften and release and feel the weight of your spine ease a little more deeply into the earth. Remember our spine doesn't make a straight line. So allow for that natural shape. Acknowledge that little lift in the lower back. Relax the weight of the legs, softening the buttocks, releasing the inner thighs. And invite the full weight of your body to ease a little more deeply into the earth beneath you. Feel the whole of your body supported here. For the next hour, gift yourself an awareness of the body and the breath. And through the work of our practice, recognize that merging of the body, the breath, bringing ourselves into balance and releasing the body of any tension, any negative energy. Recognize that every deep breath in stimulates positive energy, every full breath out releases your body of toxins. Inhaling deeply to nourish and energize. Exhaling fully to cleanse and relax. Remember that we typically only breathe to the top third of the lungs. So even if we only remember to do this during yoga, take time to remind yourself to explore the full expansion of the lungs and the ribcage. Filling the lungs completely with each full breath in. Emptying the lungs with every long breath out. Expanding and widening into the space that surrounds you. Softening and releasing the weight of your weary bones into the floor. Become aware now of breathing in through the nose then breathing out through the mouth. Allowing the breath to become a little noisier. Remaining aware of your space within this room, your connection with the earth beneath you. Starting to constrict the throat a little on that out breath to form what we call Ujjaya breath. Ujjaya breath sounds a little bit like a steam iron as you let go. So fill the lungs completely with that breath in. As you exhale, 
push that breath from the diaphragm. Inhaling deeply. Exhaling fully. Perhaps imagining that you're fogging up a mirror in front of your face. Feeling the power, the energy behind every exhalation. Actively releasing your body of tension. Continue to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. Then let this next out breath go with an audible sigh. A softening in the throat. An audible release. Sending a message to your body. All is well. Now start to nudge your breath back into that natural, easy rhythm. Breathing in and out through the nose. No longer forcing the breath. Feeling your connection with the breath. And noticing again the weight of your body as it rests against the floor. If you've chosen to start with the knees bent, for a moment just extend the legs along the mat and we'll separate the hands and the feet equal distance from the midline of the body. Make sure that we're fully supported the upper body by drawing the shoulder blades together, nodding the chin a little closer to the chest, wiggling the fingers and the toes. Making little circles now with the wrists, with the ankles, travelling in both directions, letting go of any creaks and groans here as we reawaken the body, stimulating that energy through the limbs. Squeeze the fingers in towards the palms, draw the toes towards the shins, squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears, then as you exhale, release and let the full weight of your body sink into the earth again. On the next inhalation, lift the arms overhead, press through the fingers, point through the toes and lengthen through the front of the body. On the out breath, hug the right knee to the chest, placing the hand to that right shin, applying a little pressure to draw the shin closer to the body. Redirect the knee out towards the right shoulder. You can feel that's gently widening the space in the lower back, but we want to just avoid rolling onto that right hip. Use the knee now to draw little circles, keeping the hand on the shin. Again, we'll go through both directions, gently mobilising the hip, warming into that space in the lower back. On an inhale, lengthen the arms overhead again, extend the leg and come back to that full body stretch. Bring the thumbs together in an interlock, draw the toes up towards the ceiling, exhaling now to squeeze the upper body to the left, opening into the right of the waist and the ribcage. Inhale to return to centre, take another full body stretch. Then bring the thumbs together again in that interlock, drawing the toes to flexion, pushing the upper body to the right now, opening into the left of the waist and the ribcage. Inhale again to return to centre, a further full body stretch, then exhaling to hug the left knee in, hand once more to the shin, applying a little pressure, widening and softening the lower back. Redirecting that knee out towards the left shoulder. Then again, drawing little circles, kickstarting that mobilisation in the hip. 
both directions to activate the inner and the outer thigh. Then inhale, extend that leg forward again, lift both arms overhead, resting now the backs of the hands to the floor, allowing the ankles to soften. So a moment here of observing that widening through the chest, that softening through the collarbones. Then we'll bring the hands to an interlock behind the back of the head. So we're resting the back of the head into the palms of the hands. The elbows are wide and we want to come now to almost like a cross-legged position. So rather than bring the soles of the feet together, cross the feet at the ankles and allow the knees to widen. So again, we're in, kind of getting into this space in the inner thighs, in and around the hips. Every out breath, just softening and releasing into this space wide through the chest on the inhale. On the exhale, a gentle drawing of the tummy button to the spine as you lead the right elbow over to the right side. So again, it feels like we're opening into the left of the waist and the rib cage, keeping the back of the head cradled as we come back through centre, then exhaling to the left side. Those elbows wide, encouraging an expansion through the chest. Inhaling again back to centre, then resting the head again into the hands. Switch that leg cross over so the opposite foot is in front or behind or top. Then separate the hands from behind the back of the head and we'll take the arms wide, backs of the hands rested on the floor. So this might feel a little tense through the chest through the space above the shoulders. Just allow yourself to relax into this posture, creating space with every in-breath, expanding and widening into the space that surrounds you. With every out-breath, feeling the weight of your body sink back to the floor. Now we'll adjust the arms, bringing them to a T-shape so they're more comfortably at a shoulder height position, palms turned up to the ceiling, exhaling again to draw the tummy button in, Dry, drawing the thighs towards one another, repositioning the feet hip width apart. Let's lift the toes from the mat, stretch the toes wide, then replace each toe onto the mat so that you can fully feel that connection through the foot. On an out breath, draw the tummy button in. On an in breath, push into the soles of the feet and lift the bottom from the floor. So we're wide through the chest. We lengthen through the front of the body by pressing the shins away, lifting the thighs a little higher. Focusing on the breath here and remaining equally weighted through the shoulder blades, through the soles of the feet keeping those knees tracking in line with the hips. So avoid allowing the knees rolling out here. Every inhale, pressing the shins forward to open into that space in the front of the body. Then on the out breath, start to gently roll down through the spine. Take it vertebra by vertebra. There's no rush. Gently easing middle back and lower back to the floor. Exhaling to engage the core, lifting the feet from the mat now and drawing the knees in towards the chest. On an out breath, roll the knees to the right side, turn your gaze over the left arm and pay attention to softening that left shoulder to the floor. Every out breath, widening into this space at the side of the chest. Every in breath, Visualising an expansion from fingertip to fingertip. On the next exhale, draw the tummy button in, roll the knees through centre. Take the knees to the opposite side and enjoy that twist, that release. Again, we want to ensure we're not lifting the right shoulder from the floor. So pay particular attention to breathing it back and down finding that space at the side of the ribcage into the side of the hip. 
and on an out breath, drawing the tummy button in, rolling the knees through centre and replacing both feet to the floor. Reposition the hands either side of the hips. Again, make sure that the shoulders are relaxed away from the ears. Exhale now to draw the tummy button in and fill that little gap in the lower back. Inhale to lift and lengthen through the right leg, flexing the toe towards the shin. So we're gently lengthening the back of the calf into the back of the thigh, bringing the foot to flexion, pushing through the heel, keeping the back of the hips and the back of the shoulders square to the mat. On an out breath, it feels as though we're drawing the hips back to the floor, sinking that weight through the lower back, pressing through the heel. Now lower that heel down a third of the way. Make sure the thighs are level with one another, then use the big toe to draw three circles in towards the midline of the body. Change direction, take those circles the opposite way. Bring the foot to flexion again, keep the core engaged, then float the heel down to rest an inch from the floor. Use the heel now to draw three wide circles. So slightly bigger circles here than we did when the knee was bent, mobilising the hip, keeping that activation on the inner and the outer thigh. Rest that heel again an inch from the floor. Inhale to point the toe. Lift the arms overhead. Then as you exhale, hug that knee towards the chest. Hands once more to the shin pressing the lower back to the floor. Then we'll take the left arm out to the shoulder height position, palm turned up. We'll bring the right hand to the inside of the bent knee, taking hold of the big toe. Gently press that heel up towards the ceiling. It's likely we'll have a bend in the knee as we push the heel directly above the shoulder. So we're staying in a centered position for now. Then on the out breath, We'll start to lead that right foot out to the right side. So as you come more into the inner thigh, you might feel that you can iron out that bend in the knee. You might need to turn the head to look over the left arm so that you remain equally weighted through the back of the shoulders, pressing through the heel, keeping the back of the hips square, soft in the core. Then on and out breath, Engage the core once more, slide the foot back again to centre. Then bring that knee again towards the chest. You could use both hands to hug the shin towards the belly. Then place that right ankle on the outside of the left thigh. And then we're going to allow gravity to roll that knee open. So we're pressing that knee a little further away, not so much that we lift the left hip, just enough that we remain square between the hips and the shoulders. Palms again, either side of the hips, exhaling to draw the tummy button in, then push into the sole of the right foot and lift it, the left foot, sorry, and bring the bottom from the floor. Press the shin forward, lengthen through the front of the thigh, then on and out breath, slowly release down. Unhook that right foot, replace that foot to the floor. Make sure again that the heels are in line with the hips, the insides of the thighs parallel. As you lift and lengthen through the left leg, and again, we'll come to that point and flex to gently wake up the calf, the back of the hamstring. Bring the foot to full flexion. And once more, it's that sense of drawing the weight of the hips back to the floor, sinking into the mat. Keep the core engagement as you float that heel down a third of the way. Then use the big toe to draw three circles in towards the center of the body. Changing direction, taking those circles the opposite way. Bring that foot back to flexion. Keep the core engaged as you float the heel, 
all the way down to an inch from the floor. We keep the foot in flexion so that we can lead with the heel now to make those slightly wider circles. And again, we'll go both directions so that we keep inner and outer thighs active. Hover that heel an inch from the floor. Take a long stretch through this side of the body. On an out breath, hug that knee again to the chest. Extending the right arm out to the side, bringing the left hand to the inside of the bent knee and pushing through the heel. So when we do the first action, it's very tight on the back of the thigh. Chances are we'll have a bend in the knee. As we start to open that leg out to the left side, we'll be able to straighten the knee out a little more as we develop that stretch into the inner thigh. I find it helps to rock the right knee open. It keeps the hips square, stops us rolling to one side. Turning the gaze along the length of the right arm. Then exhaling once more to engage the core. Slide that foot back to centre. Bringing that knee back towards the chest. Then again we'll rest the outside of the ankle on top of the thigh. Hands either side of the hips. So for those of you who are not as strong in the knee joints, if you have any knee issues, you might prefer to just keep the hips on the floor. If you have the mobility to do so, push into the soles of the feet, lift the bottom from the mat, roll that left knee open. So we're just coming slightly deeper into the inner thigh. On an exhale, gently lower through the spine, bringing the lower back to the floor. Take that left foot from the right thigh and we'll place that side of the foot on the mat, bringing the soles of the feet together, coming into a full Baddha Konasana now. So in this posture, we always notice that the lower back tends to lift. We need to allow that space so that we can widen into the pelvis. We only would pull the knees a little closer together if we find that this is giving us undue pressure in the groin. Every out breath, just allowing the knees to release a little more. Then on the next exhale, draw the tummy button in, bringing power to the lower back as we slide the thighs together, repositioning the feet hip width apart. On the next exhale, hug both knees to the chest creating a nice rounded feeling in the lower back as we gently rock from one side to the other. Then replace both feet to the floor. Now take your time to roll to one side and then bring yourself up into a seated position. Perfect. So I'm going to come into a cross leg position once more. Um, there's quite a lot of inner thigh work to be had today, but what we'll do is we'll bring the left heel in and we'll park the right foot in front. And we'll just give ourselves a little bit of release through the spine. So as soon as we come from supine into a seated position, we need a lot of discipline to keep the um, skull floating above the spine rather than letting the weight of the head pull us forward. So feel as though you're lifting from the sit bones, lengthening through the spine, softening the shoulders down away from the ears. And I'll just take a moment to remind you that it might benefit you to place a brick or a block underneath the sit bones to lift the hips a little higher, particularly if the knees are feeling tight. Now, if you allow the hands to rest just over the knees, so nice, comfortable hold, then exhale, draw the tummy button in. We're rolling through the spine and nodding the chin to the chest. Then reverse that curve, applying gentle pressure into the palms as you lift the sternum forward and turn the gaze up towards the ceiling. So if we were in a, on all fours position, we're doing cat and cow here. 
curving the spine, nodding the chin to the chest, then inhaling, lifting the sternum, opening into the heart space. Exhale again, release into that cat stretch. Then inhale once more to lift back to centre. Reposition the hands just so that they're a little bit um, north of the knee joints themselves. Then we want to mobilise the rib cage. So rather than following the shoulders, take the rib cage over to the right, bring it back to centre, then take it to the left. So it's a very subtle movement. If we follow the shoulders, we'll see more action. So if you feel as though that move is imperceptible, you're probably doing it right. So imagine that we're almost like a spoon stirring now in a cup. And again, we'll try as far as possible to keep the shoulders out of the action, then change direction so that we're going both ways. I'll make belly dances of you all yet. <laughs> then come back to centre, squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears, then on and out breath, just shrug and let them go. Squeeze the shoulders up, then roll the shoulders back and down. Reposition the hands behind the lower back. We'll make an interlock here. Then we'll draw the hands away from the lower back to encourage more opening through the chest. Just watch what you do with the chin here. Ideally, the chin keeps nodded in, underside of the chin parallel to the floor. Then release the hands back to the lower back. Separate, reposition the hands in front of the ankles. Lift up and lengthen out of the sit bones, then on and out breath, start to ease the chest towards the floor. So remember, there's no competition here. Rather than giving in to rolling through the spine to get the head closer to the floor, try to think about keeping a nice strong diagonal from the back of the head to the tailbone. And with every out breath, easing the elbows a little more deeply into that space. So we've created quite a lot of um, extra room with the warm up that we did lying in our backs. Then push into the palms, inhale to lift back to centre and we'll bring the hands just in front of the ankles. So Veronica, I'm just going to mention that your camera angle means that you're very much on the left side of the screen. Are you able to just turn it a little bit more to your right, I think it will be, and tip it down just a bit? Perfect, I can see you now. <laughs> when we leaned forward there, you went completely out of shot and I thought, oh, I think Veronica's gone for a sleep. Bring your hands behind the hips, shoulder blades drawn together. Make sure that we're not taking the weight forward. So again, we're lifting out the sit bones, then opening the sternum up towards the ceiling, finding that space through the heart, lovely. Then on and out breath, releasing and bringing the gaze forward. Let's switch that leg cross over. So the opposite foot in front or behind. Again, coming back to a very familiar sequence, we'll come to a side extension. So extending the right arm away, keeping that hand connected to the floor as you turn your gaze up to the middle finger of the left hand. That right elbow remains soft. Draw the elbow in towards the waist. Then as you bring the left hand over the midline of the body, take care that that knee doesn't lift, that you don't tip over onto the right hip. It's all in the side of the waist and the rib cage. Inhale to lift and come back to centre. Then extend, open the heart. Sink into the opposite side. Inhale again to lift coming back to centre, this time repositioning the right hand behind the hip, bringing the left hand to the right knee. We won't be using the hand to draw the knee closer. So again, we want that sense of equal weight through the knees. Lift and lengthen out of the sit bones, follow the rib cage and turn your gaze towards the back of the room. Inhale again to realign. So we lift out of the sit bones. We'll bring the arms overhead as we turn the shoulders to face the front of the room. Underside of the chin parallel to the floor, inhaling to press through the fingertips, lengthening into the rib cage. Then on the out breath, 
other opposite hand to opposite knee, lift up and lengthen, exhale to come into that twist here. Release that tension, let yourself face forward once more, then bring the soles of the feet together. So we're back into this Baddha Konasana position, lifting and lengthening, exhaling to hinge forward. And again, we don't really want to curve the spine, so don't worry too much about getting the head down, getting the shoulders forward. It's finding that diagonal and creating enough space in the inner thigh to enjoy a release here. Engage the core, inhale to lift back to centre. Take hold of the right toe or the right foot and push through the heel. Now I often find that unless I open my opposite arm, I find it quite difficult to remain centred. So use that opposite arm for balance to lift and lengthen out the sit bones, push through the heel. If you feel that you are more weighted onto the left sit bone, then we need to bring ourselves back to centre. That's better. You could see that a couple of you were just a little bit off balance there. Then bring that foot back to centre. Opposite hand to opposite foot. Again, we'll use the opposing arm for balance. And we've usually got one side that just feels a little more confident than the other. Nice. Then bring that foot back to centre. Now this won't be for everyone, and particularly for those of you who've chosen to sit on a block or a brick, you'll probably have to move that from underneath the sit bones for this next action. Um, the intention is to take hold of both feet, push through the heels, and to somehow keep our balance in centre. It's very much a yogic secret, this one. You've either got it or you've not. It's just that simple. Keep the sternum lifted, keep pushing through the heels, keep opening the backs of the thighs. Then on and out breath, bring the soles of the feet together. Lift and lengthen, exhale to hinge forward. That one's always a bit cruel, isn't it? Engage the core, inhale to lift back to centre. And now to give the inner thighs a little bit of a break, We'll extend the legs forward and come into Dandasana pose. So remember when we're in our Dandasana pose, normal posture usually dictates that there's a little bit of curvature, typically between the upper shoulders. So try to engage the core, lift out of the sit bones, draw the shoulder blades together and find that plumb line from the back of the head to the tailbone. Toes pointing up towards the ceiling, and extend the fingers forward. So confidently lifting and lengthening, inhaling now to lift the arms overhead, pressing through the fingertips, dropping the shoulders away from the ears, nicely rooted through the sit bones. Every out breath engaging the core, every in breath re-lengthening the spine, pressing through the heels, then on the next exhale, keep that core engagement as you reposition the hands behind the hips. Bend the knees up, push into the palms of the hands. Try not to have all the weight over the wrists. Push into the soles of the feet, press the shins forward, lift the thighs, the belly, the chest. Then on and out breath, release the sit bones to the floor and switch that position round so that we come into an all fours posture. So in your all fours, remember equal stacking means that knees are directly underneath the hips, wrists are underneath the shoulders, spread through the fingers. Turn both toes under, exhale to draw the tummy button in, rolling up through the spine, nodding the tailbone between the knees, drawing the tip, the chin towards the chest, then reversing that curve, resting on the tops of the feet to inhale and lift the chest forward. Exhale, rolling up into the cat stretch. Then inhale, lifting the chest forward. 
coming back into that neutral spine position, extending both hands forward, pressing into the palms, then pushing your body weight away from the hands as you extend the sit bones towards the heels, deepening the stretch into the upper arms, through the side of the ribcage into the armpits. Lifting the fingertips from the mat now, pressing the wrists to the floor. Imagining your hands like windscreen wipers. So using the hands to wipe from one side to the other. Replacing the palms to the floor, lowering down onto the elbows, sliding the thighs back. Inhaling to lift the chest into a nice comfortable sphinx posture. So the sphinx posture is always a nicer one to come into if you have any um, caution in the lower back. We've got the hips nicely connected to the floor and it's a very gentle back bend, leading with the sternum, exhaling to the over one shoulder, inhaling to look forward, exhaling to look over the other shoulder, then inhaling again to look forward. On the out breath, lower the chest, the forehead to the floor. Reposition the hands either side of the chest. Use the elbows to draw in towards the rib cage. So you kind of feel the upper arms either side of the rib cage as you push into the palms and lift the chest. Hips remain connected to the floor. If you have tightness in the lower back, you might prefer to just come a little bit lower. Then on and out breath, push back, return to that lovely long child's pose. Inhale again to lift forward. Exhale again to push back. Inhale to lift forward. Exhale to push back. Lift back up into the all fours position. So make sure the knees are under the hips, the wrists under the shoulders. Then we'll take that right foot back. We'll turn the toe under, pushing through the heel. So getting into a nice stretch at the calf, at the ankle. We'll keep the hips and the shoulders square as we take that right foot out to the side. And we just deepen the stretch into the inside of the thigh then bring that foot behind again then slide that foot to the left side you can push your weight a little bit more deeply back into the hips just to extend that stretch to the side of the right hip then return to center take the left foot back turn the toe under We'll start with the foot extended to the left side, into the inner thigh. Slide the foot to the right side, pushing the weight back to get into that outer thigh. Then bring the knees back again to centre. Then we're going to come back onto the heels. We're not going to stay in this hero position and I know that certainly some of you with knee mobility will be struggling to sit all the way back. So let's push into the shins and lift up. It's almost as though you've, you've had your legs cut off from the knees down but rather than hanging around on the knee joints themselves, push into the shins so that the weight of your body is being supported by the calves, by the lower legs. So I always find that when I push in, the hips tend to push forward a little bit. Try to be very um, sure of keeping that tailbone tucked under, the sternum lifted, and the head again floating above the spine. Perfect. I'm gonna start with the hands on the hips, just so that we can feel the rocking action of the hips. We want the hips to remain square as we take the right foot out to one side. And we're making sure that that toe is pointing forward. Then we're lifting that toe from the floor. We're using the heel to wipe a circle like we did with the window wipers earlier, and then back in to face forward. So we're working through the ankle, opening into this space in the inner thigh, 
and then just finding that little bit of lift under the buttock. Perfect. Then bring that knee back in, take the opposite foot out. Same action, but we want to start nice and square. So foot to the floor, then roll out and roll in again. So it opens up into the inner thigh and it finds a little contraction there under the buttock. Last one. Perfect. Then we'll bring that foot in and we're going to use this left knee just to bring our weight onto the thigh, turning the back to under and coming up into a standing position. Perfect. So come now to the edge of your mat. Um, I like to use the length of my mat, so I'm coming right to the front. Again, I'm going to suggest hands on hips. It's always a good way of noticing if the hips sway while you're doing the action. Ideally, we want the shoulders always stacked above the hips. We're going to take the right foot back. And I always take a moment to step that right foot a little wider. If the right foot is directly behind the left, it means our balance is a bit impaired because the hips are generally wider than that. Then as you press that back heel to the floor, try to keep the inside of the foot parallel, i.e. don't let that back foot roll out or you'll cheat yourself of the benefits of that calf stretch. So when we're in this kind of scissor position, just double check that we've got a nice long straight front leg, tiny bit soft in the knee just to avoid locking and the back leg is firmly rooted. Keep the hands on the hips as you exhale, hinge. And the intention is to keep the shoulders stacked in line with the hips. Pressing the sit bones to the back of the room. Then peeling that right hand from the right hip and extending that arm forward. Keep the ears between the upper arm. Bring that hand back to the hip, engage the core, then inhale back to centre. Step the feet together, we'll do exactly the same move on the other leg. So take the left foot back, again a moment to widen it, to sink the heel to the floor, to encourage that length to the front leg. Then come into the 90 degree angle. And this time we're taking the left arm forward. And the temptation here is to kind of lean into that bent knee. So try to keep that front leg a little bit straighter. Then bring that hand back to the hip, engage the core, lift back to center and walk the feet together. So we've done an action um, firstly on our backs, then we did it seated and we're now going to do it standing. So earlier on, we took hold of the toe and we extended the leg out to the side. Obviously standing, that's going to be a little bit more challenging. So if you have a wall or the back of a sofa or something hand, ha, handy nearby that will give you a little bit of support, should you need it for balance, then grab it. The other thing I would suggest is it's somehow easier when you're lying on your back to take hold of the foot, even though we know that the arm is nowhere near as long as the leg. When you're in a standing position, the first thing that happens is the upper body is going to hinge forward as the hand tries to grab hold of the foot. So if you would prefer to use a strap, you might find that that just makes up that little bit of gap, that little bit of distance between the two. So we're going to start by taking hold of the right foot. So we're on the left leg, we're nice and long in that left leg, lifting out of that supporting foot. Then we'll extend that right foot forward. Beautiful. Then on an out breath, we're going to take that foot to the side. And if you're using balance, let's see if we feel confident enough to take the hand away from the wall. Beautiful. And for those of you who haven't got anything to hold on to, <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Lovely. Now keep that level of focus as you bring that toe back to centre. Yes, lovely. Then replace that foot to the floor. Good. Now I'm going to suggest that you breathe. Because as we always do when we do balance work, we've held the breath. Because <gasps> if I breathe, I'll fall over. So take a deep breath in through the nose and a full breath out. <sighs> deep breath in through the nose and a full breath out. <sighs> Lovely. Let's come to the opposite foot. So right leg is now the standing leg. For most of you, that will be better because you're probably stronger on that side. Press the left heel forward. It's very difficult not to curve the back because obviously the, um, the arms are not as long as the legs. Then open that leg out to the side. Good. That's nice, Noreen, I like that. Beautiful. Some good Kung Fu moves going on here. I wouldn't want to meet you on a dark night, that's for sure. Remember to breathe. Then bring that foot back to centre. Wonderful. And replace that foot to the floor. It's really hard because you can't quite reach that space, can you? It's like, my feet are really far away. So to balance out the back of the hips now, because chances are one leg was slightly more forgiving than the other, we're going to take the feet wide, parking the insides of the feet parallel again, so the toes are pointing forward and keeping the knees nice and soft. I'm a big fan of hands on hips, then hinge forward, and we're only gonna to come to 90 degree angle, so we don't take the head any lower. Shoulders parallel to the floor, pressing the sit bones to the back of the room. It might be that you can lift the tailbone ever so slightly, just deepens the stretch to the back of the hamstring. Lovely. Now we're going to swing the body weight over to the right side. So I'll show you the action. We take a bend in the right knee, we bring the hands to the floor. So again, we're not dropping the head forward. Lift that right heel from the mat lift the left toe from the mat and turn that toe up towards the ceiling. <laughs> we got there. So we're kind of combining two things that we've done today. Beautiful. Then rather than coming from that standing height again, we're simply going to shift our weight over and come to the opposite side. So this posture is a bit of a kind of side lunge. This posture um, turns up in the salute to the moon and that's a, a series that we haven't done yet. So when we come to the next full moon, I'll do a moon salutation with you, the opposite of the sun salutation. So this is one that's handy to know. We'll scoot back over to the right again. So if you lift the right heel, it does make that connection with the floor a little easier. Then scoot back over to the left. Just want you to practice that transition. Good. Feels a bit like a monkey, doesn't it? <laughs> Scooting. Beautiful. Then we're going to come back to centre. Again, ideally we want to stay at a 90 degree angle. Then bring the hands onto the hips. Make sure the insides of the feet are parallel, the toes aren't turned out. Engage the core. Soften the knees a little so that you're not overloading the back. Then lift the chest, keep looking down at the floor. And when you're sure that you're not gonna get dizzy, lift the gaze forward and step the feet together. Perfect, you made that look easy. So come into a mountain pose now, turning the palms towards the front of the room. And a bit like we did when we came onto one knee, then the other, we're just going to peel the heels from the floor to come up onto the balls of the feet. Then lower the heels back to the mat. So that action of lifting up onto the um, balls of the feet, then lowering back down. There's obviously quite a lot of travel in the upper body, so engage the core on the way up, then soften and release on the way down. This time, as you lift up, lift the arms overhead, press through the fingers. Then lower all the way down, bring the hands either side of the hips. Nice work. 
Now extend the arms forward, I'll come side on. Push the sit bones back. I'm going side on so that you can see that my knees are not traveling forward. That's the wrong way to do this posture. The correct way is to anchor the knees over the ankles. Push the sit bones back towards the back of the room. And we'll undo the benefit of this posture if we allow everything in our pelvic floor to hang out. So on an out breath, draw the tummy button in, lift the pelvic floor up, remain focused on the breath. Then lower the hands down either side of the hips, push into the soles of the feet, inhale, lift up. Lift the arms up overhead, bring the palms together so that you make an Anjali Mudra. Turn the gaze up towards the base of the thumbs. Keep those hips where they are, so don't push the hips forward. Lift the sternum, open the heart and come into a deeper release, into a gentle back bend. Then bring the hands back to heart centre. Bring the gaze forward. Gently tuck the tailbone under. Hands again on the hips. We did the similar posture to this with legs wide. We're now going to have legs together as we hinge forward. Back into the hamstrings. Some of you will feel this in the calves. We'll give ourselves a little release by peeling the right heel from the floor. Then switching to the opposite. So we're almost like pedaling through the feet, a bit like we do when we do the downward facing dog. Then press both heels to the floor, straighten the legs again, push the sit bones to the back of the room. Then come back into that chair pose, remembering the benefit of engaging the core, lifting the pelvic floor up, keeping the breath steady rather than holding the breath. Every inhalation, cooling the thighs down. Every exhalation, pushing tension away from the body. Releasing the hands by your side. Inhaling to push into the soles of the feet and lifting back to centre. Beautiful. Now reposition the flats of the hands into the lower back. Before we did that hastasana with the arms overhead, we're going to keep the hands protecting the lower back as we lift the tailbone, lift the gaze up. But again, try not to let those hips shoot forward. It tends to crunch the lower back. Then as you exhale, engage the core, lift back to centre. Now drop the hands back down either side of the hips, turn the palms towards the front of the room and find a nice comfortable mountain posture. So mountain posture, I will remind you, if it's taught by a man, is usually taught with the feet touching because they don't have hips and things and big thighs in the way. When it's taught by a real woman, <laughs> we stand with the heels hip width apart, little bit of gap between the feet, because we're much more naturally supporting our bone structure if we allow ourselves that little bit of space. Turn the palms to the front of the room, soften the shoulders away from the ears. And I'm just gonna invite you now to close the eyes. So as soon as you close the eyes, there's a possibility you'll feel that you're being drawn forward or back or to one side. Rather than fight that, just go with the flow I move a lot when I'm in this posture. Just take a moment to scan the body from head to toe and become aware if you're holding any tension anywhere in the body. Usually to kind of control ourselves, we anchor the knees or we uh, push the hips forward, soften the buttocks, relax the thighs. Really important that the knees are soft, not locked out. And again, that might cause you to drift a little more. Just lean into that natural action. Every out breath, remind yourself that we're drawing the tummy button in, lifting the pelvic floor up. 
with every in-breath, allowing the upper body to expand and widen into the space that surrounds you. Now squeeze the shoulders up towards the ears on the next breath in. On the breath out, control rolling the shoulders back and down. Inhaling to squeeze the shoulders up. Exhaling to roll the shoulders back and down. As you come to the next exhalation, just shrug the shoulders away. Relax. Again, we're keeping the eyes closed. Tuning into the breath. Slowing the breath down. When we laid on our back, we take a, took a few moments to take the breath a little deeper beyond the top third of the lungs. Find that expansion again at the back of the ribcage. With each deeper inhalation, direct the breath to the belly. Feel the belly rise on the inhale. Then soften and engage on the exhale. Belly rise on the inhale. Engage on the exhale. Return to that Ujjaya breath we did at the start of the session. So we're making the breath a little noisier, almost as though we're constricting the throat, as you would do if you were fogging up a mirror in front of your face. Deep breath in through the nose. This next exhalation go with an audible sigh. Rather than blinking the eyes open. For now, just keep the eyes closed. If you have glasses, you may prefer to just flick them on top of your head. As you bring your hands to an Anjali Mudra in front of the heart. Now rub the hands briskly together, creating warmth here in the palms of the hands. Then we're going to open the palms over the closed eyes, just gently resting the hands over the top of the face, feeling that heat in the forehead, through the cheeks, over the bridge of the nose. Taking a moment now to blink the eyes open behind the hands, separating the fingers to start to allow a little light through. Slowly draw the fingers down over the face, allowing a little more light. Keep the fingers attached to the face, tracing the lines of the face over the cheekbones, over the jawline. Then return the hands to an Anjali Mudra in front of your heart. Touch to the head for kind thoughts, to the lips for kind words, and to the heart for kind intentions. The light in me honours the light in you. Namaste. I tricked you all a little bit there and got you to stand up at the end. <laughs>